is going to be an exciting night. My name is Bobby Tonelli. I'm going to be your host for this evening. And together with the team from Tatler Home Singapore, we're, going to, we're delighted to have you with us for the fifth edition of the Tatler Design Awards. Now, we are unveiling the winners through live stream tonight for obvious reasons, but we hope next year we can all be together to celebrate this uh, fantastic event. Now, before we begin, please take note of the following things. Since we are live stream, we ask you to please mute your mics uh, throughout this entire live stream broadcast. We have a lot of people talking and there could be some background noises and everything else. We want to make sure everybody's heard, but we want to keep your cameras on. Okay, cameras on are important because we want to have toast of congratulatory to our winners and to our speakers and to everybody else. So we want to see those beautiful faces of yours. Now, for any reason, if you don't have, if there's any sort of like technical problems throughout this event, please let us know in the chat box below and our Tatler representatives will tend to those. And any questions you have for our uh, Q&A or sort of our speaking presentation later on, please put those in the chat box as well because uh, we'll choose questions from that later on in this evening. So, for our guests in Singapore, please enjoy the selection of food and beverage that we have sent to you earlier this evening. Now, the canopy set is specially created by Chef Tim Myers from Tim's Fine Catering. It presents a modern spin on local flavors. We've also included a botanical drink from Malati, this homegrown brand offers the first Asian-inspired alcohol-free drink, so please enjoy that as well. But before we begin, I do want to thank our sponsors. Of course, we got Aura, Aro Gallery, Box Euro, Gagano, Hafari, MM Gallery, Okamura, Roche Baboise, and Spin. And we'd also like to thank our venue partner, Straits Clans. We're actually broadcasting live from the Snug Room. They actually call it the Snug Room, believe it or not. It's a uh, lounge area in the exclusive members club at Bukabaso Road at second level. So that's where we're all at, hanging out here on this very beautiful couch. Now, the theme for tonight is called Local Roots. It's obviously, obviously evident by the couch and by this whole tropical theme of the Tatler Design Awards 2021. And this remarkable setting, as we all as well, well known as for our homegrown talents as we celebrate tonight. Now, every year, it's our pleasure to bring together designers, home furnishing brands, and our readers to honor the achievements of the local design scene. Now, I'd like to give the floor, or I should say couch for that matter, to the editorial team of Tatler Homes to share a few words. Please welcome Kissa Castaneda, editorial director of Homes and Travel at Tatler Asia, and Hong Sing Ying, managing editor of Tatler Homes Singapore. Sing Ying, Kissa, take it away. Thank you so much, Bobby. Yes, so we're as as Bobby said, we're broadcasting live from the Snug at Straits Clan. And he also mentioned that it's been over a year since we saw all of you guys in person for the last Tatler Design Awards. Coincidentally, that was the last Tatler event that we did in person before our lives forever changed. If we look at what happened in the past year, one of the main things we realized is how important homes have become. It's our universe for the past year. It's also demonstrated the incredible power of design to shape and improve our lives and well-being. So now as we have the Tatler Design Awards, the fifth edition, um, Every year we do the same thing. Basically, we look at the projects that make it into the pages of the magazine and online on tatlerhomes.com. And the editorial team, so Sin Ying and myself and the rest of the editors, shortlist the projects and we ask our jury members to vote on their favorite projects. But of course, there's criteria involved and the criteria that they look for are the originality of the design concept, the high quality of the execution, clever spatial planning, as well as contextual relevance. In addition to that, for categories that we have, such as best use of color and the best show unit, we have engaged our Tatler readers to vote for their favorites online. And this year, we have another surprise, which is the trophy design. You'll see it later on. And I think Sin Ying can explain a little bit more about our collaboration with MM Gallery, the stone specialist. Sinying, over to you. Certainly. Designed by David Tam of Studio Norm, the trophy design draws inspiration from MM Gallery's unique marble bending technique. The firm slices layers of natural stone to an extremely slim and pliable profile of 3mm in order to bend the material into a curved form. By encasing these thin layers of stone in resin, David's design also cleverly celebrates the firm's remarkable technique. There are two versions of the trophy design presented to the winners this year. The recipients of the 10 main categories will be given the version in black marble. The version in blue onyx will be awarded to a new category that we are introducing this year, entitled Designers on the Rise. Sponsored by local laminate brand Arova, the Designers on the Rise category recognizes the achievements of young design firms, led by Singapore-based talents with years of experience. The designers will each craft artworks using Arova laminates. These sculptures will soon make their debut at the new Arova showroom, so stay tuned. 
It's an exciting time for the Singapore design scene, and we look forward to seeing more innovative projects from these homegrown firms. We're very proud of what the awards winners have achieved, and we would like to thank our jury members, as well as our readers, for their participation in the selection of winners. Now, on to the awards. Over to you, Bobby. All right, before we do that, though, I want to show actually the trophy. We actually have a sample of it here because this is very beautiful. Let me see if you guys can zoom in on this, if you can, possibly here on the camera. Look at this. Beautifully crafted. It's really nice. It's isn't really it? nice, right? And I you love can take it home, Bobby. You're a winner for tonight. <laughs> oh, well, thank you very much. It's very kind of you. That's very kind of you. But no, I love the pink uh, the font right here. It's beautiful. So, whoever wins this, congratulations on that. All right, now let's introduce our jury. Our jury at the Tyler Design Awards for their invaluable support. This is our seven member panel. And this includes Steve Leung, founder of Steve Leung Design Group, an international firm headquartered in Hong Kong and Shanghai and provides architecture and interior design services in Asia and beyond. Also, we have Clint Nagata, founder and partner of Blink Design Group, a hospitality design firm with offices in Singapore, Bangkok, and Shanghai. Actually, Clint is with us via Bangkok this evening. Catherine Pooley, founder of Catherine Pooley, a British interior design and architecture studio based in London. She's actually with us via Bahrain. Tio Su Sim, a partner of LTW Design Works, a Singapore-based firm known for designing luxury hospitality and residential projects around the world. Sue is on the couch with us here today. Erwin Virai, Head of Architecture and Sustainable Design at SUTD, the Singapore University of Technology and Design. Erwin's with us here on the couch. Sabrina Long, Dean of the School of Art and Design at NAFA, the Nanyang Academy of Fine Arts. Sabrina is not with us on the couch. And finally, Mark Wee, Executive Director of Design Singapore Council, who will be giving the keynote speech for tonight. Now, Mark will be sharing a congratulatory message to the winners on behalf of the jury panel, as well as his thoughts on the future of design in Singapore. Here's a quick message from Mark. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for inviting me to be a jury member for this year's Tatler Design Awards and to allow me to speak with you all today. But first, congratulations to this year's winners for being recognized as one of the most notable residential projects built in Singapore in the past year, despite their challenging circumstances. Speaking as an architect who has had the pleasure to design some houses in my lifetime, I understand the privilege to be entrusted to design a sanctuary for a family that will be their place of home. In my role as the head of the Design Singapore Council, I often get asked, what is Singapore design? I could rationalize that it is an evolving one that finds expression from our multicultural and multiracial society, where there's no one language due to our diversity but a rojap of expression with an Asian tropical sensibility. But instead of searching for an identity in how Singapore design looks, I feel it lies in a certain spirit in the impact that it makes on our society and even the world at large. This is in the same manner as what being Singaporean is for all of us, not by our race, but rather a shared set of values and mission for a better society and progress. And this is precisely what we look out for in our President's Design Award recipients. Since 2018, we revised our award criteria to recognize design impact in the following areas of enabling economic transformation, raising the quality of life, advancing Singapore's brand and culture, and making groundbreaking design achievements. And it's been amazing to see the breadth of project winners from across diverse design disciplines, from service design, cutting edge sustainable innovations, branding projects to heritage preservation. And we'll be announcing the winners at the end of June this year at the Astana. At the Council, our main roles are to strengthen the competitiveness and the competencies of the design industry, drive innovation in business and government through design, and infuse design as a national skill set. We recognize that for designers to produce significant work in the world, they need to have a distinctive identity and voice on design. Our Good Design Research Program helps designers develop their unique proposition in designing for impact through research and experimentation. Our inaugural run last year saw seven projects awarded that address a range of global and societal issues. For example, fashion label Jin Lee Studio created an on-demand and on-the-spot manufacturing solution that is both sustainable and experiential for customers. You can experience that at the Great World City Outlet. Forest and Will, a talented industrial design duo, 
is looking to reduce the use of single-use plastic containers through innovative and sustainable food packaging alternatives. And Common Ground, a social design agency, is on a quest to build inclusive and responsive social networks through community design. We are also working with businesses to help them uncover new opportunities by placing their customers first and driving profitable human-centered innovation. And last year, we partnered with McKinsey Design to launch the Business Value of Design program. We used their proprietary design index to help business leaders assess their company's design performance and surface improvement areas. And Singapore is actually the first country to do so, and feedback from participating companies have been most encouraging. And finally, how can we develop the next generation of design leaders, as well as nurture creativity and a design mindset when they're young? In February this year, we held the second Design Education Summit aimed at inspiring and equipping both educators and parents to adopt design thinking in general education. And the response was incredible, as it drew more than 600 attendees and a testament to the growing interest in educating our young ones in the skills of the future in creativity, collaboration and empathy. We also continue to invest in our future design leaders through our Design Singapore Scholarship. And since 2005, we've actually supported 62 recipients and in recent years observed that more are pursuing emerging design fields like service design, design engineering and design management in response to the new design roles emerging across the economy. So the world ahead has changed and all of us are wondering what the new world ahead looks like. In a future of unknowns, where most would be fearful and anxious, this is where designers thrive best, in their ability to imagine the future. Designers are futurists, thinking about what's going to happen and making something new happen in the world to make it a better place. And hence, before the world opens up again, in this rare chance for us to slow down, dig deep and reflect to find clarity of mission and purpose, this year's award theme of Local Roots is so apt in its season to invest in nurturing new ideas that could yield a harvest later. And with that, I wish you a most wonderful evening. And once again, the heartiest congratulations to all of this year's winners. Thank you. Thank you, Mark, for that inspiring speech. And I'm sure that you're all eager to find out the winners of the Tatler Design Awards 2021. Now, just to let you know, we're gonna be splitting this up into two groups. We're gonna do a handful of awards first, then we'll be doing our panel discussion, then we'll finish up the event with our last of the awards. Now, we have a total of 11 categories to award tonight. Now, the first category is the best architectural concept sponsored by Hafari. Now, before we announce the winner, here's a message from the sponsor. Hi, everybody. I'm Jackson, the Chief Operating Officer at Hafari. We're delighted to be the sponsor for the best architectural concept, the best show unit categories for the Tatler Design Awards 2021. As a homegrown brand, we have been defining living spaces with our selection of surfacing materials and solutions since 1980s. In sponsoring these categories, Hafari wants to acknowledge the hard work of the talented Singapore designers and architects. Congratulations. Thank you. And the winner is RT Plus Q. Dub the House of Spice. Yeah, round of applause for RT Plus Q. Now, the Dub the House of Spice, the family home of RT Plus Q co-founder Renee Tan, takes its name from the terraces on which herbs and vegetables thrive. The home's modern concrete shell incorporates boxes and quartz and steel, glass and timber. Inside, a series of surprising elements pique interest. Congratulations to RT Plus Q. All right, now we are moving on. We'll be presenting the award for Best Bespoke Concept, sponsored by MM Gallery. Enjoy a short video from the sponsor. Hi everyone, I'm Hilary from MM Gallery. This year, MM Gallery is sponsoring the Best Bespoke Concept, and we would like to congratulate all of the Tatler Design Award winners, and we hope to see more innovative designs in the future. And the winner is Archaeology Interiors. Congratulations. 
Now, home to a family of four, this apartment celebrates an intriguing mix of materials. These include uh, shagreen, ostrich leather, marble, and onyx. The home also features quirky touches, which include an aquarium for, for, for Lalique fish figurines. All right, congratulations, guys. Now, moving on to our next category, we'll be, re, re, I can't even talk, be presenting <laughs> the award for best penthouse. Get that out. Sponsored by Gagano. Please ensure a short video from our sponsor. I'm Cheryl. I own a cafe and I specialize in making handmade ice cream. My love for desserts actually started since I was young, baking cookies and muffins with my mum. Outside of work, I do like baking for fun. It's a creative outlet for me. Baking is especially fun when you do it together with a group of friends or with family and I like experimenting with new recipes. Of course, it makes the process a lot more enjoyable and a lot smoother when you have great equipment. For example, a great oven ensures a better end result when baking. That way, I can also challenge myself even more with new recipes. I like baking too, chocolate chip cookies, but that's another video for another day. Anyway, and the winner is Design Intervention. Now, yes, congratulations, Design Intervention. This penthouse in Bangkok makes the most of its en enviable sight and views. Now, this home is subtle use of blue meant, is meant to give the feeling that the penthouse is floating among the clouds. That's stunning. I actually want to see this penthouse. Is it on Tyler Holmes? <laughs> Yes, yes it is. I gotta go check it out. Tylerhomes.com. All right, next, the best tropical concept category presented by Spin. Here's a message from the sponsor. Hello, everyone. I'm Gerald, director of Spin Fans, and we are very happy to be able to sponsor the best tropical concept category for this year's Tetler Design Awards. Spin has been the ceiling fan industry for eight years, and we have been providing homes with beautiful fans, perfect for our sunny weather. As a Singaporean brand, we believe in supporting local creative talents. We look forward to many more inspiring projects. Thank you. All right, and the winner is Forma Architects. Yes, indeed, Forma Architects. Now this home is brimming with lush foliage. The facade is clad in travertine to bear the brunt of the tropical climate. Durable chengal wood is used for the outdoor decking and wall cladding. Congratulations. Next, we will present the winner for the Best Use of Art category, sponsored by Oro Gallery. Enjoy a short message from the sponsor. Hi, this is Serena Chiang, the founder of Aureo Gallery and the Group Executive Director of US Art Bank International, which is based in KL. It is an honor that to be the sponsor for the Best Use of Art category for the Techler Design Award 2021. As a feature brand of US Art Bank International, Aureo Gallery is a contemporary art gallery representing the world's only gold painting artist Kim Yute and several international artists such as Jagannathan, Ramachandram, Michelle Yap, Jay Yong, and many more. A carefully designed art arrangement and construction could elevate sceneries, properties, and private life to a new height. We are confident that this year, Tecla Design Award would be a great inspiration for us. Thank you. Thank you. And the winner is Archetype. Congratulations. <laughs> Left unoccupied for a decade, this 80-year-old property has been given a facelift that preserves much of its original architecture. Now, in this home, family heirlooms coexist with tree-like sculptures and oak flooring. The result is a modern home with a timeless look. And the last award for this segment, which will be uh, presenting the project with the best innovation, sponsored by Okamura. Enjoy a short video from our sponsor.
And the award goes to the new State Courts Complex. Now for this project, Siri Plus Multiply Consultants worked closely with executive architect CPG consultants for an innovative two tower concept. Now the courtroom tower's lack of an external facade represents the openness of the judicial process. Now its exterior is clad in terracotta, just like the roots of the shop houses in Chinatown. High rise gardens add a calming greenery and filter out the tropical sun. Put our hands together for a big round of applause for the winners so far. Congratulations. Now we have five more categories to present later this evening. Stay tuned to find out more about our winners. Now, as part of this special event, we're conducting a virtual chat, as we'll call it, with our jury members, some of whom are with us here at the Straits Clan tonight. They are Professor Erwin Virai of SUTD, Tio Susim of LTW Design Works, and Mark Wee of Design Singapore Council. He made his way right over here right after his speech. The moderators for tonight's talk are Hong Sing Ying, Managing Editor of Tatler Homes, Singapore, and Kisa Casaneda, Editorial Director. I love that name, by the way. <laughs> Thank Editorial you. Editorial Director of Homes and Travel at Tatler Asia. We also have overseas jurors joining us virtually from Hong Kong, Bahrain, and Bangkok, respectively. Please welcome Steve Leung of Steve Leung Design Group, British interior designer Catherine Pooley, and Clinton Nagata of Blink Design Group. Now over to you, Kisa Sin Ying. Thank you so much, Bobby, and we're really honored to have six panelists from our jury tonight. We're just missing one, so yes. it's very good attendance. Thank you so much for, to everyone who came in person and also to everyone joining us from overseas, from Bahrain, Hong Kong, and Bangkok. So if you look at what happened in the past year, there are many realizations. And one of the main things we think about is actually sustainability, how important it is in our lives and how important it is in design. So tonight's topic is all about sustainable design. Sin Ying, any more thoughts on that? Indeed, it's a tough learning curve for everyone. The only constant in life is change, or so they say, but instead of fearing change, firms and companies, as well as designers, have learned to embrace it. It is a time for innovation and experimentation. How do you create healthier, happier and safer spaces to live, work and play in? How do we make shared spaces more mindful and purposeful? And how do we think more about our carbon footprint, both as individuals and as a nation? These are the topics that the local design scene have reflected deeply upon. Last year, the Design Singapore Council has launched the Good Design Research Program and to sort of support socially and ecologically conscious projects. Mark, would you like to share more about that? Um, I mean, before COVID, um the world is already grappling with all sorts of challenges, right? Um, things like uh, sustainability, like you mentioned, uh, environmental challenges, climate change, and aging. And then, of course, post-COVID and now uh, mental, mental well-being is also another large kind of topic. So um, last year, we launched a Good Design Research Program. And it's actually meant to be able to provide some funding for designers to just do exploration and research so that they can come out with maybe new product services or just be able to dig deep into something that they normally would not be able to pay for or they have to self-fund. So I think it's been really encouraging as I shared as some of the award winners and, um, and the response has been amazing. People have been thanking us for even just giving this resource for them to just kind of go into it, really investigating something that would be able to apply their skills to make the environment better. Yeah, so we're, we're going to be announcing the 10 winners for the next uh, round soon. And our third round for whoever is interested is going to be open on the 15th of April. So check out our website for that. Thank you, Mark. Owen, as the head of the School of Architecture and Sustainable Design at SUTD, this topic certainly embodies the university's ethos. What are some recent projects you would like to share more about? Thank you for the question, Siying. Uh, SUTD has that mission to actually nurture innovators uh, uh, who will use technology and through design create a better world. And one of the projects that we do would be that uh, art house project in Inujima in Japan. And it is a project that we work with Kaseo Sejima, the Pritzker Prize uh, laureate from Japan. And it is uh, dealing with aging population. So you have a population of about 30 people in the island with an ab average of very young age of 60 to 80 years old. And so the students actually learn how they can use the resources in the island and then deal with all these young residents of the island and bring 
vitality into the island. So issues of aging, issues of circularity, using what is in the island, and then bringing new life to the island. I think that that is one way to expose the students to creating a better world. That's amazing. I mean, when we think about sustainability, I think a lot of the focus is on, you know, greenery, I guess that's very surface, or in the environment, but also the, how to sustain a community is, is very, very important. Um, I'd like to ask um, our jurors who are overseas, especially those who work in hospitality, which is all of the three joining us today, Steve, Catherine, and Clint. So Steve, would you like to share your thoughts about how your firm has responded to the crisis and also how you're thinking about sustainable design at the moment? With the COVID situation, um, like many of us, uh, we cannot travel since last early last year. And by doing that, um, before that, we used to travel a lot uh, to mainland China, to Asia, or even, you know, to, to, to even further uh, other places. Um, but now we get used to uh, more online meetings, presentations, but I think it's very good because it, don't, it doesn't really just save our time, it saves our cost and improve our efficiency. Maybe the only thing that we cannot do is um, we cannot uh, have a site inspection on workmanship, maybe we cannot have a sample or mock-up approval and inspection, things like that. But I think after a while, when this COVID situation is improved, then we can travel. And I think we get used to this kind of hybrid situation of uh, working uh, collaboration. Uh, I think it's, it's, it's uh, and also with the improvement of the, the software and uh, live meetings uh, like this, then I think we're getting a very uh, improving our working efficiency a lot. Thank you so much, Steve. And when, when we think about working remotely or working in several places, of course, Catherine and Clint, you also work with different projects and different offices. Actually, Clint, you're joining us from Bangkok today, but as I know that you spend your time, you split your time between Bangkok and, and Singapore. Could you let us know a little bit more about your working situation and how you have adapted to COVID-19? Well, you know, we're, we're actually foremost a global practice. So, you know, we've had to practice in this way for since the firm has been existent. So, you know, we, we do, like Steve said, a lot of virtual meetings. Um, you know, we've had site visits uh, virtually with um, cameras, etc. We've done mock-up room reviews that way in Japan. It, it's, it's sort of a new way of working. Um, I, some of it works, some of it doesn't. Uh, but one thing that you cannot replace is human interaction or the ability to go to a site and feel what the site is like. And that's what I miss. I miss connecting with my clients, uh, connecting with their sites. And just, you know, sometimes you can go meet a client and have a five minute discussion and resolve everything. But, you know, virtually it's hard to do that through Zoom. So I think the best of both worlds is something that would make me happy. I mean, of course, that's right. We'd love to. I'm sure Singapore misses you very much, Clint. And I'm sure it's also much easier to do this um, talk in person, right? <laughs> it's much easier to do this talk. So as a hospitality designer yourself, what are some positive examples you have seen and experienced when it comes to sustainable design? Well, we've always encouraged a sustainable design for in the last 40 years in our design practice because all our projects are global. And we have to uh, research and source for uh, local materials uh, to try to see how to construct them. But more and more recently, we also notice a lot of the five-star luxury brands um, have embraced and, and understand that it's not necessary that you have to use exotic materials or expensive materials to show a good design. So I think the important thing is timeless design, less detail, but well, well detailed as well. Um, and also to um, how to use local materials and create a beautiful design. Um, even in like buffet setups, uh, it's now integrating spaces, combining multifunctional spaces, uh, and also to even mini bar consumption is reduced as well. Uh, a lot of the in-room amenities has also been considered. Instead of wasting bar soaps of bars, bar soaps, you now have containers that is, it's just plastic and uh, you know just saving. Uh, yeah, really, all these small I, I little things really count. Little little steps, and if we can't 
if we can't use the materials because some, some um, owners, they, they have a different understanding, it's a matter of education, educating, um, we can also encourage by the source of economy, local craft, villages, um, using a simple uh, material and again creating a beautiful design to help to, uh, to, to encourage growing the economy there. Yeah, indeed, I, indeed. I think, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Sue. And I mean, of course, as Sue, you have, you have mentioned the hospitality designers on the panel. It's a lot, much, much bigger scale. You know, you have to convince your client to build sustainably, to operate sustainably. But, you know, for us who don't own hotels, for us who own homes, what are the small things that we can start today, that we can do today in our daily lives? I'd like to actually ask Catherine. Um, it's a topic close to your heart. Could you share more ideas, like actionable ideas for us uh, homeowners? Yes, I, I just want to really say I'm in between a Steve and a Clint in that I grew up in Steve. I used to travel so much and it's quite nice to just be uh, at home for a little bit. But like Clint, I'm global. And as you can see, I'm, I'm a UK based company, but I'm currently in Bahrain. And this is the first time I've been overseas for a year. It's, it's liberating. And to have that one-on-one -on -one interacting is, is just, there's nothing like it. So, but back to sustainability, look, I think at this time more than ever, it's critical to be sustainable and we have to protect and our decisions have to be our choices. It can't be government related. We have to start with us. Um, I would like to, you know, I have a little list here, but suppliers, for example, use suppliers that are sustainable. Uh, Daydar and Perennials, for example, are manufacturing re with renewable energy. Um, Organic fabrics use organic fabrics. De Laconia, we all know know them. They use recycled packaging and use faux leather or faux chagrin. There's so much of it now. You don't have to go around killing those beautiful stingrays. And actually, their skins deteriorate. It goes quite cream over time. Um, we use pineapple leather. We use salmon skins. Um, timber. Don't use the precious ebony or, or rosewood. Use veneers. Um, incorporate plants and trees into the designs. And it's lovely to see that so many people who've won today have actually done that. Paint, paint is a very toxic um, substance. So please make sure uh, you, you check the VOCs. Uh, Graph and stone is a sustainable paint and they're really uh, user-friendly. User um, they have many harmful chemicals, so, so just be careful. Um, use natural fibers, for example, the wool. We all use in cashmere these days, but wool is a really durable and it doesn't hurt anything in the planet. Carpets, there's some carpets where you can use recycled bottles. Uh, Pinton carpets, for example, are fabulous. And last but not least, try to buy locally. We're all shipping so much these days that uh, it's not great for our environment. Thanks so much, Catherine. That's a long list. Um, we're probably going to write it on tatlerhomes.com so that everyone can take note of what materials to choose. I mean, we actually did a story recently on mushroom leather, which a lot of fashion brands are using. Um, so that's, that's an alternative as well. I wanted to ask Clint a little bit more about not materials, but how you use the materials in, in your design. So biophilic design is one thing that you, you're that you practice in, in your firm and also in your projects. And a lot of people talk about biophilic design as a trend. Do you think it's a trend or a movement or it's here to stay? Well, you know, as, as a firm, we really try to avoid trends and try to avoid, you know, we, we really want to do something that's timeless. And for us, the idea of biophilia has really existed um, as long as our practice has been around. So we try to embrace that, you know, the idea of, of nature uh, in all aspects of our projects, whether it's through materiality or through the spaces or the feeling of the space that we create. You know, whether the projects are here in Asia or they're located in the Middle East or the U.S., it's something that I think is almost natural as humans. You know, we, we desire to go outside to nature, and I think even more so during the pandemic. The pandemic has sort of forced us to reevaluate our lives. You know, I, I, I all of a sudden became a gardener. I've got plants at home, which I thought I'd never do, but you know, it's. I think it change is good. It's refreshing, um, and it sort of inspires, you know, our our everyday living. That's true. I can see a plant in your background, so you've probably developed a, a green thumb, right, right, Clint? Um, I think all of us. I have. I don't have a green thumb, so I, I'm going to stick to like um, 
this kind of plants like here on <laughs> the couch. Um, I want to ask Steve as well um, if you have further thoughts on, the, on this topic, especially in, you know, you're based in Hong Kong and a lot of your projects in China and these, you know, there are a lot of big cities and you can just see urban jungle. I think a lot of people don't know about Hong Kong. It's actually very green. So can you tell us a little bit of how you combine the inside and out and maybe a little bit about your bathroom as well, which I heard is fantastic. Okay. Uh, I think, I think uh, uh, biophilic design is getting um, very, you know, uh, very welcome and very popular both in mainland China and in Hong Kong, especially with uh, our, this pandemic situation. Because uh, as you have already said, Hong Kong is actually very, it's, it's so different from Singapore or even in uh, Thailand. Uh, our, our, our development is very, very condensed in, the, in the, some of the central development district. So uh, we have not as many landscaping area as Singapore or as Bangkok. Uh, but we have a lot of countryside, and this countryside are actually very beautiful, which I haven't actually had the chance to, to visit. But with this pandemic and no traveling overseas, a lot of Hong Kong people go out to visit the countryside and they fell in love with the countryside. And then they know they need to uh, live with the nature. And that's why people are actually uh, thinking about having more natural lighting, natural ventilation, and they they, they don't turn on their air conditioning as much as they, they, they did in the past. And I think they, they have indoor plants, outdoor plants on the balcony or in the gardens. I think people now realize that it's important to, to live together with the nature. And of course, bathroom is also another place that you can actually, you know, have some more fresh air in, in terms of uh, indoor plants. Uh, I mean, it's, it's the most relaxing uh, space in your house. So I think uh, biophilic design can exist anywhere. And also people also like to have a bigger balcony, uh, even a small garden is nice. So I think people are actually uh, having their mind actually, you know, change a bit with this uh, pandemic situation and they really love nature. Definitely. I mean, I'm, we're all missing Hong Kong's hikes. That's one thing that we're looking forward to when we visit you in Hong Kong. Now, we're all, also going to talk a little bit about not biophilic design, but another part of sustainability, which Sinning wants to touch upon on. The social impact of design really is as important as well. You really want to try to give back to community as designers and architects. Ma, maybe you can share more about some of the ways that these designers can give back. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, to be honest, uh, design actually can really solve real-world challenges and be used to address unmet, net, un unmet needs in society. And um, designers are really in the best position to be able to do that. And really, they're, they're perfect candidates to be able to create solutions for the future. Actually, just uh, last year during COVID, right, um, I can give you some great examples. There's an award-winning local firm called Stuck Design, mm -hmm. and they saw the need, and they basically went public and they said that they will offer their services for free. And basically, whatever IP was created, they will just give it. So they were creating kind of um, interventions with the healthcare systems around frontline equipment and things like that. So that's been really amazing about how designers could step up. Another thing I was uh, thinking about was um, how designers actually are also helping disadvantaged groups. Um, there's been a growing awareness in the design community for more inclusive design. And designers are actually increasingly designing for less able and disadvantaged local communities. So there's a great local label called Wearable, where basically they're designing clothing for people with stiff joints and limbs and really most uh, fitting for stroke patients, mm -hmm. right? So it's really they're creating tops where it's easy for you to access. It's been amazing. And um, I just want to put a plug. There's a great project out uh, when, in a collaboration between a product designer and architect um, Lakavaksia and Y, Lansavaksia and Y, and uh, Lekker Architects. And they mm. put out this thing called the Heck Care Guide, where it basically it gives you a guide to what's taking things from Ikea and how you could sort of like uh, use that to hack furniture in your home so it's more dementia friendly. So they're just doing amazing work right now. Indeed, all of these sound so inspiring. On that note, Catherine, I know you have a project that is really close to heart for you at, that really supports disadvantaged groups called the Childhood Trust. Would you like to share more about that? Yes, of course. So I am an ambassador for the Childhood Trust and it's really for very 
um, disadvantaged children in the UK, there's still quite a great deal of, of poverty in the UK, believe it or not. And uh, we're trying to help children that are on the streets. So what we have done is create big halls where we've, or, or even their bedrooms, for example, and we'll, we'll work very closely with our suppliers. So IKEA, for example, might give us some beds. Um, the white company will give us duvet covers and sheets. Um, we, we work with our carpet suppliers who will give us the carpets. And we have so many fabrics left over from our projects that we're creating curtains. So we're trying to create an amazing space for these children so they actually have a place to go, go to. We're also part of United in Design for um, minorities, ethnic groups who are supported to get an even better chance in the world of design in the UK. And I just think as designers, we have a huge responsibility. And every year we give a prize for sustainability to the KLC group. Thank you, Catherine. That's really very inspiring to hear what both international and local designers are doing to give back. So Owen, on that note, are there some projects that your students are currently working on at the moment that really try to give back to the community to help these disadvantaged groups? Um, there is this part where we call social architecture. And then it works with the communities uh, back in Singapore to actually improve the public spaces in Singapore. And then, of course, uh, using data. So there's evidence actually on how these spaces and how it is perceived by people and how you can respond to them appropriately. So there are projects that are in collaboration with SU, uh, between SUTD and then HDB. Overseas, we also have projects sponsored by Capital Land and building uh, kindergarten in Vietnam. So the students also work with the uh, young children in Vietnam and then build the kindergarten together. So, so I think these are opportunities actually to expose the students to what's happening in Singapore and also to the world and then how we can contribute to making a better world, not just Singapore, but also to the world. Thank you, Owen. It's really wonderful and heartening to hear what the designers are all doing around the world to give back. On this note, we actually have some questions from our guests. So uh, we have this one question about really how do you get homeowners or ho hospitality operators to really think about sustainable design? What are some tips that you can offer <laughs> as a way to convince your client to really give sustainable materials or solar panels a try? So would you like to comment on that? I think um, it's starting to happen right now. Um, because the sustainable materials, um, they are start, they are um, more long lasting, um, as well as durability and maintenance. Um, so, and um, we also try to encourage them to use, like to show them that like, you don't have to use exotic marble. You can actually replace it with resin that has a similar um, textures or aesthetic value. So. Slowly, I think they are trying, they're going to do, they're doing that. Wow, that's really great to hear. Owen, what about yourself? Yeah, maybe to uh, follow on what Sue has said, maybe one way for the developers and then clients to understand it sometimes is to show them how joyful it is. And sometimes it's joyful when it comes to cost. <laughs> if it is, <laughs> I if, think if that's it, everyone's yeah. concern. Yeah. So if, it, if, if you say that uh, you're using these materials, local materials, and they are durable, you can say that you can actually bring costs down, or maybe if you do these uh, solar panels, maybe you can have this waiver from the authorities, and then it gives you these other things. So by showing them um, the advantages and using numbers and then financing, I think they will be able to accept these things that are being introduced. <laughs> Thank you, Owen. Very practical tips in there. <laughs> so on that note, we also have a question specifically for Catherine. Catherine, uh, this is a question from a fellow interior designer. So uh, this person is asking, do you have any advice when it comes to incorporating sustainable, eco-conscious materials, such as the ones that you have suggested? And which are your favorite materials to work with? Mm -hmm. Well, actually, Asia has some of the best uh, materials that you can incorporate. And what we then tend to do is to, to bring them back into the UK. For example, peacock feathers, you can integrate it with leather and it makes amazing uh, shears. Um, 
in trying to incorporate sustainability, uh, the, the, the things that I have mentioned, I think when you're choosing, and you also have a choice when you have a client, what products you use. And, and I think as the, the, the other juries have said, it's really important that you put forward your ideas to the client. So paint, choosing paints, you have to go on the back and check the substance and then also go online and do research about it. It's, it's, it's quite important that we take the responsibility ourselves. I hope that answers your question. <laughs> Well, I hope it does. And if any case, we'll follow up separately if we have more questions. <laughs> so here's another one, which is more general, perhaps directed to uh, Clint and Steve. So do you have any advice for new designers starting out? Maybe we can start with Steve, if you have some advice to share. Uh, I, I think um, this generation is um, has a lot of opportunities. And obviously, um, they have a lot of challenge as well. Um, with the improvement and the advancement of the technology, I think uh, it, it will help a lot when we are doing design. But at the same time, but I think uh, the, our profession is getting uh, more and more complicated. So if I'm going to give an advice to the young designer, I think uh, we do not really uh, should rely uh, totally on um, technology which we should make good use of them. But at the same time, when we do design, we have to always put human as fundamental. Uh, in Chinese, we said yuan wei ban. I think we do not work for the machines. We, we, we actually use the machines to assist us to do our design. So this is one thing. The other thing is probably, I think, uh, you have to consider uh, sometimes like, like a sportsman, you can be an all-round sportsman, but sometimes you need to be concentrated or focused in certain uh, things. So you may consider to be a uh, designer specialized in certain things. And I think that, as I said, the, the profession is getting more complicated and professional. So maybe some designers can specialize in a certain aspect or a certain category of projects. And I think that is my uh, advice to the, to the young designers. Clint, what about you? Do you have any advice you'd like to give for these young designers? Yeah, I have one advice, and it's, it is to travel. You know, we, we offer a travel scholarship uh, every year uh, to anyone in our company to travel anywhere they want. Um, I, I forgot the amount. It was quite significant. I think 10,000 Singapore dollars or something like that. Um, I think travel really changes your life or can change your life. And, you know, I, th you know, I think Steve and Catherine will also agree. Um, I would travel, you know, especially during COVID. Well, I, I guess hopefully it's over soon. But... Um, you know, take a year off, travel, see the world, uh, get life experiences, and I think you'll see the world differently. Thank you, Clint. Catherine, would you have any advice you'd like to share as well? Yes. Look, I think it's, as Steve said, this is not a, this is not a small industry anymore. It's massive and it's very complicated and you can't afford to, to lose money here. So take the time to educate yourself, take the time to get experience and you're never too small to make a difference. And uh, last thing really is minimize waste because we will create a global model for how to live in harmony. Thank you, Catherine. So on that note, maybe let's look forward to the future. So what are your hopes for the future, both for LTW Design Works and as well as maybe on a broader sense? Um, I, I guess apart from focusing on design, I, I like them to also have a social conscience um, to um, give back to the community, so which we are already practicing um, a few years already. So we do that on a quarterly basis. Um, but now with COVID, we can't, but I would like to encourage that moving forward. And my vision is one day to be able to, like what Erwin says globally, just help to build something to the community that helps the underprivileged. I, I think that's what we owe to, to, to these people, to these guys. Yeah. Thank you, Sue. What about you, Mark? What are your hopes for the future of Singapore design? Heavy question. Simple question, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> you get I get to do one. that for work, right? <laughs> yeah. um, no, I, I think the future is bright for designers. I'm serious. I mean, I think that um, it's, 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 it could have been a better time. Um, really, in this kind of new world, the world has changed. And it's really, people are rethinking how you live, work, play. Um, systems and structures have to be redesigned. 
and actually entire experiences have to be redesigned. I mean, just even this is an experience that we are trying to design better, right? Mm. And I think um, that, and really designers have that gift to be able to project, think in the future, and figure out how to create something that has never existed. So I, I would think in terms of skills, two things that, they should, that designers for tomorrow should preoccupy themselves with. One is really think circular. Really think about how you're designing for the entire loop, right? And then think transdisciplinary. Just collaborate. Get out of your comfort zone. Work with, work with people in other realms. Scientists, engineers, whatever. Because I think, as the panel has shared, it's so complicated. People are looking into systemic uh, challenges, and, we, and, they need and they need solutions for that. And designers have to believe they actually have the power to convene and be humble and collaborate and just create for a better future. Indeed, yeah. it's all about collaboration. Absolutely. It's really an important gift and responsibility as designers and makers to really find ways to work better together and to give back. So, Owen, on that note, what are your hopes for the school and your students? Well, um, <laughs> I wish them to be happy and healthy. And then, uh, in being happy and healthy, I wish that they would uh, maybe I'll borrow some thing from someone who's a very good singer who said that for you to be able to sing very well, you have to keep on listening. And so I wish that my students and the students around the world would keep on listening to the world and then seize, I mean, take the opportunity that is being given to them. So by listening and being sensitive to this, we can respond to them. And then, of course, the next one would be to keep on singing. And in order to you, for you to be able to do this, that means that you have to keep on singing. So that means that you have to keep on designing. You have to experiment. You have to do things and that not be afraid to fail at all. And as Mark said, you have to work with many people. Yeah. And then the last part would be for them to work harder. Work <laughs> harder to make it a better world, a better sustainable world for all of us and for everyone in the future. Can I, can I just add a yeah. little bit? Sure, I mean, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> right. No, I, I mean, thanks for inspiring me. I mean, you, you had asked a question around what, do you, what are my hopes for Singapore design? And I really hope that people would think about Singapore design as design that really is trying to make the world better. And I think that's something that we all could stand alongside. Thank you. I think that's really a very hopeful note for the future. And I think really we do have a brighter future to look ahead to. Well, thank you everyone for the session. It's been very enlightening. As, and we will uh, proceed next to the next segment. And I'm sure you're excited to find out more about the next winners. Bobby? Yes, for sure. Over well, to you. It's kind of like, hard to follow that up. <laughs> it's really inspiring, guys. Thank you so much. Now, uh, if you guys have any questions for our panelists, you can also reach out to our Tyler Holmes team and they'll follow up with you shortly as well. Now, we're presenting our final categories for this evening. The next category we will be presenting is Designers on the Rise, sponsored by Arova. Uh, this new accolade celebrates the work of three young design firms. Here is a congratulatory message from the sponsor. Hi, I'm Eric from Arova and Box Euro, and we are proud to be sponsors of Tetler Design Awards 2021. As a local brand ourselves, we are honoured to support local design firms for both Design on the Rise and the Best Living Room Awards. And on behalf of Arova, we would like to congratulate all the winners as well. All right, thank you, Eric. And these firms are Archlux, Quad Architects, and Sojohanon, right? Is that right? Sojohanon. Sojohanon. <laughs> See, my tie is not as good as yours. Thanks, Kista. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Backed with years of experience, these homegrown talents are now leading their own teams to create remarkable homes and show flats. Congratulations, guys. Next, we'll be unveiling the four winners of the Reader's Choice categories. These projects have been selected based on the votes collected last year during the online voting process on tatlerhomes.com. Now, voted by our readers and the jury, these projects have garnered support for their stunning interiors while embodying the unique qualities celebrated by each category. The first of the four categories is the best use of color. Here's a video from our sponsor, Roche Mabois.
That's very colorful. All right, and the winner of the best use of color is E and A Interiors. Yes. Now, you're bound to do a double take when you spot the sports car in this living room. The Jaguar E-Type model was the inspiration for the home's design. Of course it should be. Now, the blue walls celebrate the home's proximity to the ocean while allowing the car's fiery hue to stand out. Congratulations. Love a car in a house, you know? A car in a house. <laughs> Why not? Why exactly. Not? <laughs> All right. Next up, we unveil the project with the best living room, sponsored by Box Euro. This award goes to Prestige Global Designs. Congratulations, guys. Now, this Strata house embraces a monochromatic theme filled with delightful surprises. Materials such as marble and leather communicate luxury. This rich range of textures is playfully paired with colorful cause and bare brick collectibles. Love that. Congratulations. <laughs> yes, and our next category we are awarding is the best luxury concept, sponsored by Gagano. And the award goes to Summer House Design. Now, close collaboration was the key to the successful makeover of this semi-detached house. Now, the firm was in constant dialogue with the owners, as they should be, to discover their preferences, eventually designing a luxurious yet cozy interior. Now, indirect lighting plays up the various textures in the home, and congratulations, because it is absolutely beautiful. Now, the last category, well, the last category, time is flying by. The last category we are awarding tonight is the best show Show units always spoil us, right? They look so good, and then we always want to make our homes like that. I can never get mine to look that way. Anyway, <laughs> this is sponsored by Hafari, and the award goes to Design Works Interior Consultant. Congratulations. <laughs> Representing the, both, uh, the best of both old and new is this black and white bungalow, which balances its iconic elements with modern touches, ceiling coves, and marble flooring lined with black trimming echo the abode's iconic facade. Congratulations to all our winners once again. This was an amazing awards presentation and to the achievements of these designers and architects. And you know, I think we need a toast, right? We've got yes. this glass of champagne in front of us. It's been sitting here. We haven't touched it. And I think it's time to pick up a glass to congratulate our winners. For Thank you. Congratulations. 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 And to those Cheers. in our respective countries, oh, congratulations over there. Cheers. Steve, Catherine, Thank you. Clint. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. 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 They're all so healthy with water. <laughs> We're a little bit on the, living on the edge here. <laughs> all right. Now, before we conclude tonight's event, we would like to play a clip specially prepared by the Tatler Homes team. They made a few surprise visits to the offices of these design firms. Please enjoy. <laughs> Oh, oh my goodness! Wow. Oh wow! Oh, that's so cool! Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh wait, I'm very surprised also. I don't know what, what is this for. Great, thank you for all this. <laughs> so I don't need to prepare any answer. No. <laughs> oh wow! Super! <laughs> Here. Oh, that's amazing. Yes. Yes. No, no, are you sure? Oh my god, that's amazing, thank you. <laughs> it's a great honour for us to receive this award and I would like to thank Tad for this uh, wonderful recognition. We are indeed grateful to have been given recognition for this achievement. I would like to thank Tatler for, for this. <laughs> thank you very much, Tatler. Thank you, Tatler Holmes. Thank you and have a lovely evening ahead. And from the couch, thank you guys yes. so much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great night. Stay safe, everyone. Take care. <laughs>